Hey guys, welcome to another Python tutorial for beginners. So in today's video, we'll start off by talking about a few of the control statements that you can use in the while loop and talk about the nested while loop with a few examples. So let's get into this. So as we talked about in the for loop video, the control statements such as pass, break, continue, and else statement can still be used in the while loop. And we can basically use them very similar to how we use them in the for loop. By the way, if you need a recap on the basics of a while loop, please wrap back to the previous video in the top right corner. So let's first create a while loop that iterates through a list. So I'm going to create a list one here and then put our four elements here, A, B, C, and D. And then let's also create an index. And then below there, we can create a while loop while index is less than length of the list one colon. We're going to use the square bracket method to print out each of the element in the list one. List one, square bracket index. And let's not forget to increment our index so that we don't end up with an infinite loop. So index plus equal one. So we have a while loop here. Let's say that I want to break this while loop iteration when the current element that I'm iterating through is element C. So for that, we can first set the current element of the value that we are iterating through, meaning this one, list one square bracket index. So I'm gonna first create a variable here, current element, and then just paste the list one square bracket index. And let's delete this for now. And then I'm gonna also have an if statement here. So if current element is equal equal to C colon, then I want to actually break, meaning I want to stop the iteration of this while loop. Otherwise, I want to print the current element. So if I run this, then you will see A and B printed out, but not C and D. And as we learn, this is happening because when the current iteration element was C, it went inside this if block and it instantly exits out from this while loop iteration, meaning it just stopped the iteration. So that's why you are only seeing A and B, but not C and D. Okay, then now let's talk about the pass statement. So inside this if block, if I replace this break statement with a pass, and as we talked about, pass is just a synthetic sugar for you to create a placeholder without any code. So when current iteration is hitting element C in the list one, it will come inside this if block and run the pass and pass doesn't do anything because uh, it is just a placeholder. So it will move on to the print statement that we have below. So if I run this, then you will see all the elements in the list one coming out, A, B, C, D. So let's run this and you will see A, B, C, D coming out. So even though we have the if block here that catches the element C and then we run the pass, it doesn't do anything because pass is just a placeholder. Okay, so then now let's talk about the continue statement. So let me first replace this pass statement with a continue. And let's run it first without me trying to explain what's gonna happen. So if I run this, then you will only see A and B printed out without C and D, but the loop will just keep running as you see here, meaning we've just created an infinite iteration. And why is this happening? So let me first stop this and explain what's going on here. So when while loop iteration reaches the element of the C, it will go inside this if block and run the continue statement. And when the continue statement is run, the while loop will try to go to the top of the code and start processing again. Uh, meaning while loop will move to the next iteration without updating the index at the very bottom because continue statement was run before the index incremental statement that we have here. So what this means is that when while loop goes to the top of the code again, the index is still two and element is still C. And so that it will go inside this if block once again and run the continuous statement again. And same thing will happen over and over again. And that's why you are seeing the infinite iteration here. So then to show you what I just explained in an action, let me actually add a line of print statement below the current element. So I can do print current element, element, and then also print the index out. And below the if block, let me also add another print statement, print before continue. And let's try to run this once again then you will see an infinite loop here with a print statement. So if we kind of like a scroll up, then you will see the current element, which is C, and then the index printed out. So the current element is C, and then the index for that element is two. So it's gonna go inside this if block because the current element is C, and it's gonna run the before continue. So when continue is run, it's gonna go to the top of the code, but the index hasn't been updated yet because the index incremental statement is at the very bottom. So the current element is still C again, and then the index is two. 
So it's going to come inside this if block once again and run the continue statement. So same thing happens over and over again as you can see in the console. So in order for us to fix this infinite iteration issue, the only thing that we have to do is to move this index incremental statement above the if statement. So the index can be updated before the continue was run. So I can simply cut this incremental statement here and put it above the if statement. And now let me also put some label here so that we can differentiate the value. So I can say final value here. So if I run this once again, then now you will see a0, b1, and c2 coming out from this print statement. And when the element is c, it's actually going to go inside this if block and run the before continue print statement and run the continue. And so when the continue is run, it's going to go to the top of the code again. But this time with an updated index because we actually ran the index incremental statement before the if statement. So now the index is 3, as you see here. And so the element is d. So it's going to skip this if statement and go to below print statement that says final value and current element this time will be D. Okay, so now let's finally talk about the else statement. So else statement is really simple. As we talked about, when you put the else statement without the if statement at the same level as where the while loop starts, the interpreter will go to this else block once the iteration is over in this while loop. So I can just say, uh, errors in the same level as the while loop and then just put another print statement and say that while loop iteration ended. So if I run this one more time, then you will see the older iteration same as before. And when it actually reaches the end of the element, which is a D and index of three, then it's going to print out the while loop iteration ended. So whatever the code that you have in this else block will only run when the iteration is completely over in this while loop. Okay, so then now let's talk about how we can use a while loop in a nested manner. So just like the for loop, we can use the multiple while loop within a parent while loop. Let's try to use the same while loop that we've created above. So let me just simply copy and paste here. So we have the list one with a triple A, B, C, and D. So same logic as before, we have the index starting from zero. And if the index is less than length of the list one, then we're gonna iterate. So the current element is set to list one square bracket index. So we are actually using the index to iterate through each of the element in the list one. And in here, we are printing the value out. And then at the end, we are incrementing the index by one so that we don't actually end up with an infinite iteration. So the idea here for the next while loop will be very similar to what we have here. So we're going to create another index called sub index. And then we're going to have another while loop inside this while loop and say that if the sub index is less than the length of each of the element that is passed from the parent while loop, meaning each of the string that we have, then we're going to iterate and we're going to use the string indexing to print each of the character up. So let me try to create another while loop here below this print statement. And let me first specify the sub index. So sub index set it to zero. And then another while loop here while sub index is less than length of the string. So in this case, the current element that we set above here and then colon I'm going to use the string indexing here. So print and say character value, character value, and then set that equal to the current element square bracket and pass the sub index. And let's also not forget to increment our sub index so that we don't end up with an infinite iteration. So sub index plus equal one. So if I run this, then you will see the element value triple A coming from this parent while loop. And this uh, current element is being used in the nested while loop with a sub index. So for the initial iteration, the sub index is set to zero, which is less than the length of the current element because we have the uh, three characters here. So the length should be three. So it's going to print out the character value of the current element square bracket over zero. And so that, that's why you are seeing the first character in this line here. And we are incrementing the sub index by one. So now sub index is one, which is still less than three. So it's going to print out once again, character value, current element square bracket of one. And this uh, second A is basically the second A here. And same thing happens again. So the sub index is two, which is still less than three. So it's going to print out one final time of the character value of A, which is the last A that we see here. And same goes on for all the elements that we have until the triple D here. Okay, so then now let's try to create a nested while loop with numbers. So I'm gonna set a count variable and then while count is less than five, I want to print the count, but I wanna also put some label. So parent while loop 
and then comma count and then let's not forget to increment the count by one and then let's create a nested while loop so in here i'm going to create a sub count equal to zero again and then another while loop while sub count is less than and this time i'm going to use the count because the count is the number that we are generating from the parent while loop and in here i'm going to have a print statement saying that charge while loop and comma and then i'm going to pass the sub count and let's not forget to increment our sub count here so then let me run this so if I scroll up, you will see the parent while loop of zero coming out from the first iteration. When the count is zero and sub count is zero, zero is not less than zero. So it moved to the next iteration of the parent while loop. So now the count is one. So the sub count is zero is less than the count of one. So it went inside its nested while loop and printed out the chart while loop of zero. And then it increased the sub count by one. So when the sub count is one, one is not less than one. So it moved to the next parent while loop iteration. So the count is now the two here and the sub count is reset to zero. So zero is less than two. So it went inside this while loop again and printed out this chart while loop of sub count of zero and it increments the sub count by one. So one is still less than two. So it printed out the another print statement chart while loop of sub count of one here and it added one again. Now the sub count is two, two is now less than two. So now it moved the parent while loop once again. So the count is three again. So the same process happens over and over again until the end of the element, which is the parent while loop of four and then child while loop of zero, one, two, and three. Okay guys, that's it for this video. I hope that this video was helpful and we've completed all the basics for Python iterations using both for and while loops. For the next few videos, we'll try to go through a few examples to practice the iterations that we have learned as having as many practices as possible will be a key to success for becoming a good programmer. And if you find these videos helpful, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next videos.